everyone. Thanks for joining us here on CBS News 24-7. I'm Lana Zak. And I'm Errol Barnett. As we approach 2 p.m. here in New York, 1 p.m. in Chicago, and 11 a.m. for those of you joining us from the West Coast. Here are our top stories at this moment. Vice President Kamala Harris gets the chance to lay out her vision for the country as she accepts the Democratic Party's nomination for president tonight. And within the hour, former President Donald Trump is expected to visit the southern border in Arizona. We're going to take you there live. Also, President Biden urging Israel's prime minister to reach a deal with Hamas. Our Remy Innocencio will join us to explain the obstacles and where talks stand now. Plus, the body of British tech entrepreneur Mike Lynch is recovered from that yacht that sank off of the coast of Italy. We're going to have the latest on efforts to locate the missing passenger. Well, the countdown is on towards a history-making night at the 2024 Democratic National Convention in Chicago. That is right. We just saw outside the United Center. That's a now shot of what's happening inside, quieter than it was last night. And in just a few hours from now, it will get loud once again. Vice President Harris will complete the transformation from presumed running mate to Joe Biden to the party nominee for president. And as the convention continues, so do questions about Vice President Harris's immigration proposals. CBS News anchor and correspondent Adriana Diaz spoke with members of the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights about what they want to see from the Democratic nominee. What is the view of Kamala Harris among the immigrant community you work with? People have different experiences with her or know of her in different ways. We know that she has an immigrant background herself, and we're wondering what is that going to mean in terms of how she can show up for our community. Um, so there is hope, and there's a lot of um, questions as to whether or not um, she will deliver on what they've been hearing from, you know, um, the previous administrations. So what do people that you talk to, what are they saying about Kamala Harris? Are, is she is going to support black migrants? Like, what are the immigration reforms going to look like? Is there going to be job opportunities and other resources? Are is like, is she going to is she here to help us? Is she going to include that in her policies? You know, make sure like black migrants are receiving or migrants in general like are receiving the opportunity, mm -hmm. or is she just here just to, you know? just talk to talk and just get power and not do what she said. What is it specifically that that people want from Kamala Harris in terms of immigration policy? They want a, a pathway to citizenship. They, they want to be able to see legalization happen for the 11, over 11 million people that are here. They want to be reunified with their families that they've been separated from for decades. They want to be able to have health care for everyone. They want to be able to see their children get a good education. They care about all the same things that other folks care about. They just don't want their status or their family statuses to um, deter them from being able to access those things. And the crisis at the border is just one area that Vice President Harris is expected to touch on during her acceptance speech. Her campaign says that she plans on telling her story of coming from a middle-class neighborhood and her work as a prosecutor before rising to the highest levels of American politics. CBS News campaign reporter Aaron Navarro is in Chicago for us covering the convention. So, Aaron, what can we expect Harris to hit on in her speech tonight? What is her objective? Errol, as Errol mentioned, uh, she has to focus a little bit on her record, reintroducing herself to voters who have really been tuning in. This is a big primetime moment for her. So showing uh, her middle class background record as a prosecutor, but also leaning into the contrast with the Trump Vance ticket. You're going to expect to hear her talk about issues like abortion, mentions of Project 2025, that conservative blueprint that they're trying to tie to former uh, President Trump. But she will need to really put a period on all the enthusiasm Democrats have seen in the United Center, all the numerous speakers from Oprah to Obama to Bill Clinton praising her, really hyping her up to this crowd. She will need to show why they should believe in her, not just attend rallies or attend the convention, but go out and knock doors for her in what's expected to be a pretty close race. And we know that the DNC is really a big party, but we do want to fact check these candidates and specifically something Tim Walz said in his speech. I want to begin with what he mentioned about the Affordable Care Act. Let's listen. And we know if these guys get back in the White House, They'll start jacking up the costs on the middle class. They'll repeal the Affordable Care Act. Okay, CBS News confirmed uh, the confirmed team labeled that as misleading, him saying they will repeal it, saying 
Uh, in this election cycle, Trump continued to criticize the law, but he's not said that he supports terminating all of its policies outright. In fact, back in March, he said he was not running to terminate the ACA, but instead wanted to make it cheaper. Help us understand the differences now in health care policies from both campaigns. Yeah, Trump, of course, was involved in 2017 in the effort to repeal the Affordable Care Act. That ultimately failed, showing that it's a bit politically volatile for the Republican Party. And Trump has kind of learned from that to an extent, saying that he will not, you know, repeal it completely, but wants to replace it with something, quote, cheaper, quote, better. Has not given many specifics yet on what that would look like. Now, Harris has not unveiled an official health care policy plan yet, but from her time as vice president, she's focused on maternal health care as well as women's reproductive rights. That's the big contrast Democrats are leaning into between herself and former President Trump. All right, another fact check, this time Project 2025. Their Project 2025 will make things much, much harder for people who are just trying to live their lives. They spent a lot of time pretending they know nothing about this. All right, the CBS News confirmed team didn't label it as false, but they did label it as misleading, saying Trump advanced have not adopted their blueprint uh, as their campaign platform. They have attempted to distance themselves from it. Uh, Aaron, do voters even care about Project 2025? We do know that there is some overlap with things that president or that the former president has said he wants to do out there on the campaign trail and what we see as pillars in 2025. But how much does that actually go towards motivating people at the polls? Yeah, and CBS News, as you mentioned, has identified at least 270 proposals in this big Project 2025 blueprint that match what Trump has said in the past regarding his policies. Now, in terms of voters caring, you haven't really seen that pick up until uh, earlier this summer when it was started to appear in more TikToks, language about it. It's more of a tactic to rile the Democratic base up, showing and uh, arguing the threats, the dangers, and their words that a second Trump presidency would present when it comes to certain rights about abortion, about federal workers potentially being cut in mass numbers. But this is really something to rile the base up. You saw Keenan Thompson from Saturday Night Live hold the big Project 2025 book yesterday uh, on the convention stage and connect with people, kind of trying to illustrate um, you know, the actual people that will be impacted if these policies are enacted. But so far, it hasn't really uh, shown or hasn't been pitched as a way to get those more moderate independent voters quite yet. And Aaron, probably the most kind of emotive highlight from Walsh's speech was the support he was shouting out toward his family, Hope, Gus, and Gwen, you know, his kids and his wife. We saw his son Gus mouthing, that's my dad, as he was <laughs> crying with enthusiasm. How exciting was last night for them? Yeah, you could tell on Gus's face. It was a big moment for them. It's been a whirlwind couple of weeks uh, for the Minnesota governor, who has really leaned into <laughs> both being a family man as well as just being a neighbor. He often says in his speech that no matter what religion, race you are, he grew up in a small town in Nebraska. He learned to treat his neighbors well and encouraged uh, in every rally speech he's given. It has encouraged the crowd to do the same. But obviously a lot of joy matching the tone that he had in his speech coming from his family last night. All right, Aaron Navarro in Chicago for us. Thanks so much. A sit-in is taking place at the United Center protesting the U.S. support of Israel's campaign in Gaza. Many of the demonstrators are delegates representing uncommitted voters in the Democratic primary. Democratic officials have turned down their request for a Palestinian speaker at the DNC. Protests have mostly been peaceful this week. More than 2,000 people protested outside of the convention last night. And make sure to stream our special DNC coverage concluding later tonight. It kicks off at 5 p.m. Eastern with America Decides. Former President Trump is in Arizona today visiting the U.S.-Mexico border. That's right. It's the latest 